After his rookie season, the sky seemed to be the limit for running back Saquon Barkley. He was drafted with the second overall pick back in 2018, and he went on to winning Offensive Rookie of the Year. During that magical season, Barkley put up a monster year gaining 1,300 rushing yards in addition to 700 yards through the air. While that season was certainly awesome, his last two years have been marred by injuries. Barkley tore his ACL in 2020, and he's also dealt with a number of ankle injuries too. To start his 2022 campaign, Barkley is killing it on the ground. Through three games, he's gained 317 rushing yards and also 91 through the air. The question I had when I turned on the tape was, is this season the official return of Saquon Barkley? Can we finally trust him as a player? Before we begin the breakdown, if you can do me a huge favor and like subscribe to my channel, I would greatly appreciate it. So anyways, let's start with Barkley's advanced stats. These two that I'll show you illustrate just how good a season he's having. We'll start with missed tackle rate. This is the ability of a running back to avoid tackles on his rush and receiving attempts. In this metric, the average running back creates a missed tackle on roughly 20% of his touches. Barkley, on the other hand, has only created a broken tackle on 18% of his attempts. So if Barkley is below average in this stat, why am I so bullish on him as a player? For me, there are two major reasons for this. The first has to do with his offensive line and scheme. If you think about broken tackles, a lot of them happen based on situation. For example, if a running back is met at the line of scrimmage or behind, they are less likely to break a tackle. The running back wouldn't have time to set a good angle or to get the full speed right out of the gate. On the other hand, if a running back is already 5 yards down the field running full speed on touch, he will obviously have more opportunities to break a tackle. Think of Derrick Henry versus a safety as opposed to him running up against a nose tackle. In my opinion, this simple explanation is exactly what's happening for Barkley. According to Pro Football Focus, the New York Giants have a bottom 10 run blocking unit. This means that Barkley is getting worse opportunities than many of his peers. The second reason why I'm so bullish on Barkley is based on his rush yards over expected. If you don't know this metric, Next Gen Stats uses a computer model to project how many yards a running back will create. They factor in blocking and the position of the nearest defenders, and they calculate how many yards that running back should create on average. Barkley is one of the best running backs in the entire NFL in this metric. He's created 2.2 rush yards over expected. On top of this, he's also created rush yards over expected on 49% of his carries. Compare this to the average, which are highlighted using orange lines, and Barkley is clearly better than most. Once again, even though Barkley has a below average missed tackle rate, what he's done with his opportunities behind his offensive line is still really impressive. Before we look at his film, today's sponsor is Mojo, a sports stock market that lets you invest in the careers of athletes. Mojo is the holy grail for sports fans. It gives you the chance to cash in on your passion and truly invest in what you know and love. Instead of reading boring financial statements, you can pick players and track their share price as it rises and falls in real time. Mojo also has their published guarantee payout formula, and it's based on objective stats so you always know what your stock is worth. The app currently offers over 300 skilled players from the NFL across quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, and tight ends. If you think a rookie is underrated and about to break out, go long on that player and profit based on your knowledge. Mojo is available in New Jersey on iOS, and by just downloading the app, you have the chance to win up to $10,000 in free shares of player stock. Click the link in the description for a chance to win up to $10,000 in free shares of player stock. Must be 21 plus and physically located in New Jersey to trade on Mojo. Have a gambling problem? Help is available at 1-800-GAMBLER. So back to the breakdown, the first thing you notice from Barkley is his flexibility and how he uses it to create yards. His ability to fully squat his lower half and burst out of his cuts is simply amazing. It's something that I noticed when he was coming out of college and it's still true today. First for the Cowboys, Barkley uses vision to weave through Dallas's defense for a 36-yard score. Let's look at this play closely. The Giants were lining up under center or running strong side to outside zone. The Giants love this play at a single back, but they occasionally will run this play at a shotgun too. I think based on this scheme, running at a single back gives Barkley the best opportunities. On this play, the Giants have two tight ends in line of scrimmage. This means they have seven total blockers, including their five offensive linemen. On the defensive side, the Cowboys were in a shifted bare front. They have the right defensive tackle lining up on the inside shoulder of the right tackle. Since the Cowboys have eight men in the box, they actually have this run properly covered. With seven blockers and eight gaps, the Cowboys should theoretically have this play locked down. However, I want you to pay close attention to the left side of the line of scrimmage. There are four defenders by the left tackle, left guard, and the one heads up with the center. If the center can reach block the nose tackle or position his hips around him, this would mean the Giants will have four defenders blocked with only three guys. That's what happened here. After the snap, the nose tackle gets immediately behind on his block because of the combination block between the left guard and the center. With the right guard free to reach the right defensive tackle, this gives all the blockers on the right side of the line of scrimmage one-on-ones with their defender. Unfortunately, right guard Mark Lewinsky gets bull rushed back in the pocket. Seen him getting pushed backwards, Barkley knew to cut inside of him since he saw the helmet of the defender on the blocker's outside shoulder. Barkley steps forward and he makes his cut, meeting the backside edge defender at the line of scrimmage. Since Barkley has speed and power with that quick cut, he's able to shrug off this tackle attempt by Anthony Barr. 
Barkley then enters the second level of the defense. Once again, Barkley sees the next defender with his helmet over the outside shoulder of the right tackle. This tells him to cut inside just like the previous cut. Barkley cuts, does a fantastic job of using his vision and another jump cut through the hole, and from here he's off to the races. He uses his 4-4 speed to burn the defense and he scores a touchdown. Now watching this play from the All-22, what I liked was how Barkley attacked the center of the defense to open the cut to the end zone. Barkley knew that if he pressed down the middle of the field, that the outside cornerback might overrun his assignment. This is a very difficult play to make if you're the edge defender responsible for contain, and especially if you're trying to tackle Barkley in open space. This is just a great example of how fluid Barkley is with his footwork, and also I like how he paired his vision in order to make this happen. Now, I mentioned this before, but the Giants have a bottom 10 run blocking unit. From my film study, many of their runs were stopped at or behind the line of scrimmage. While left tackle Andrew Thomas is having a killer year in terms of run blocking, the rest of his offensive line isn't good. The guards are just playing okay, but center John Feliciano and right tackle Evan Neal are both struggling in the running game. As far as Evan Neal is concerned, I do think he's going to get better. He was great at Alabama, but it'll take time for him as a rookie to fully get up to speed. Again, this is perfectly reasonable, but it definitely does impact Barkley's ability to make bigger plays more consistently. With all that being said, the Giants' run game is very feast or famine at this point. This obviously has to do with their offensive line and their inability to consistently create openings. And yes, before I get yelled at given that Saquon is averaging 6 yards per carry, if you subtract the yards he's creating on his own, the Giants' offensive line is only creating 3.8 of those. Compare that to the other offensive lines across the league, and the Giants are once again below average. Teams like the Panthers or the Saints or the Eagles all have much better run-blocking offensive lines. They're all averaging almost a full yard more on the ground. Just imagine what Saquon Barkley could do with consistent holes in those schemes. While yes, this may sound negative in terms of the Giants, the one thing that I was really impressed with as I went through this film was how Barkley is using the passing game. Many teams will only use the running backs on simple screens and checkdowns. Not only do the Giants do this, but Barkley is running a lot more routes and having a bigger impact on the field. 91 yards isn't a ton currently, but I do think that number will only go up from here. Barkley is running fades, he's running Texas routes underneath to attack the linebackers, and he's also running sick concepts where he's an important part of the play design. For example, on his smash concept, the low read, which is what he is, is a very important player in this concept. It opens the corner shot in the defense. In my opinion, he's going to get more catches based solely on this concept. Overall, Barkley does a lot for this team even though his stat sheet won't always show it. Again, I think his numbers, and especially the 91 receiving yards, will only keep going up. Daniel Jones clearly trusts him, so does the offensive coordinator, and this is only the beginning for Saquon Barkley. Well, that's all I have for you. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support the channel directly, feel free to follow the link to my Patreon account below. Also, you can find me on Twitter at Samuel Arkold.